In this video we're going to talk about the Tomato 4 DPS, an alternative to the PC Chips M919 in your 46 system. So I have been using the PC Chips M919 motherboard in the Rust Bucket 486 for quite a while and it has one issue that's been bugging me, the lack of L2 cache. I do have an update on that front, but as you know, those cache modules are a bit difficult to acquire because they're specific modules of the M919, and while we don't get to that, I have another 46 motherboard here that already has external cache chips installed, and I'd like to try it out and see what we get out of it. So this is the Zeta Tomato 4 DPS version 2.11 motherboard. It's a tiny one, so tiny the CPU socket has a part sticking out of the mainboard. And here we have our cache chips. Originally, the motherboard had its jumper set to 128K, but I've checked and these chips are 64K each, and there's four. Now, I'm no math genius, but 64 times four is usually 256, so I set the jumpers accordingly. And speaking of jumpers, oh my. This motherboard has one of the most complex jumper layouts I have ever seen. There are weird bundles of jumpers apparently randomly placed to set up CPU multiplier and external bus frequency. These two set of jumpers are for the CPU model. Although the manual doesn't care to tell you the multiplier it's using, it tells you how to set up for each different CPU. So that's a bit of a challenge for overclocking. And the set of jumpers is for the external bus frequency. Now these are pretty straightforward. Different revisions of this motherboard have different manuals and slightly different jumper layouts. Some of them don't even have this JP18 soldered like mine does. For the ports, the motherboard has three ISO slots, three PCI slots, one LPT port, one floppy disk drive controller, two COM ports, one game port, two IDE ports, one PS2 mouse port, and one DIN keyboard port. For the memory slots, they are 72 pin and there's only two. And now, let me explain the biggest disappointment I had with this thing. So my issues with the cache module on the M919 are probably related to needing to use fast page mode memory. And guess what? The Zeta Tomato 4 DPS, as far as I could test, only works with FPM modules. I tried many different combinations, but it only boots up with the FPM modules. Luckily, I have a few of those. Not much, but enough to round up 16 megabytes. For the CPU, we're going to rely on the fastest 486 out there, the AM5X86 from AMD that runs originally at 133 MHz. A good thing about these 486 DOS systems is that they're simple enough that I can just transfer the SD card and adapter from the original setup of the Rust Bucket 486 and we're all good. And the video card we're using is the S3 Trio 64 with 2 MB of RAM. The sound card is the Long Sound Blaster 16. The BIOS is a bit more basic than the Emi BIOS on the M919. It doesn't have mouse support, but its layout is something I'm familiar with and probably most of you are as well. As usual, we install the driver for the S3 video card and before I run the test, I do want to give it its best shot and overclock the CPU to 160 MHz as I know most of these chips are completely stable at 160. So all we do is change the external bus frequency to 40 and that gives us 40 times 4 for a total of 160 megahertz at the CPU. And it should work just fine, right? Like the M919 does? Nope. For some reason the CPU doesn't like that, but we're giving it a bit of extra juice and setting it to 5 volts instead of 3. So now it runs, but remember. The M919 doesn't need the overvolt to make the CPU work at 160 megahertz. So now it boots and we can proceed to our benchmarks. I'll go straight to our quick test and first results are not great. I expected a bit more. The M919 got 16.4 FPS on the same test without L2 cache. It did have a bit more EDO RAM, but that's not enough to make a 30% difference in the final result. After seeing the results of the memory performance on speedsys, it became clear that there is something that wasn't optimized. So I made a video call to Will from Retro Tech Bytes, and he kindly spent a couple of hours with me adjusting the settings on the BIOS and we did manage to turn the system around. It was mostly a question of setting the cache to write through and adjusting the timings on it. I also realized that I don't need to set both combinations of the jumpers that set the voltages for the CPU to get it to boot. I only need to swap one of them and instead of getting the full 5 volts, that gives me about 4.5 
which is still more than what we need on the M919, but it's safer than 5 volts for the AM5X86. I also found another video card that's a little bit faster than the S3 Trio 64 for DOS gaming. And now I think I have a new favorite. After many runs of the benchmarks, I think we've got the maximum this board can output with the parts at hand. On Quake, now we get to almost the same result as I got on the M919, although a bit shy of the 16.4, it's still pretty good compared to the original 12 FPS we were getting before. Now memory throughput is decent and all the other numbers seem on par with what the rest of the community is getting. And so now we have a really good 486 gaming system in a very small motherboard. Here is something to get away from the synthetic benchmarks and to enjoy the actual gaming performance of this system. Duke Nukem runs at over 40 FPS, it's smooth and a joy to play as usual. Doom runs great and I do love the sound of the Sound Blaster 16, it's not perfect but it has the kind of nostalgic sound I can enjoy. Of course we had to run some ROTT, favorite of some of you guys and also a game I have fond memories of, Flying Eye and All. Raptor is also one of the favorites for the soundtrack and yeah, it's lovely. So there we have it, the Zeta Tomato 4 DPS is not as fast as the M919, but with a few tweaks it does a decent job and I can definitely recommend you use it if you come across one. And if your modern computer doesn't have a CD-ROM drive like most 486s, check out this video on how to get a cheap external drive. <laughs> 